about uh, contacts and about <coughs> relationships between technologies and society, and how it works in the field of archaeology. Actually, when we talk about uh, digital technologies in archaeology, but not only in archaeology, uh, usually we talk more about technologies and less about society. But actually, I agree with position that uh, understanding of societal changes and deep understanding of society is important for understanding how, uh, how technologies works and how we can use the different technologies for needs of society and for creating of added values in society and in economical values too. Because uh, connections between technologies and society, I think that we are more or less similar. Technologies are in front of the society. But for proper working of technologies in society, we need the changes in society. We need the accepting of technologies and understanding the technologies from curiosity to necessity. And when society understands some technologies as something necessary, technologies start works by, uh, by, by uh, start works properly and start works uh, as, as real technologies. An example of care as from curiosity and necessity, for example, in Lithuania, it was 100, year, 100 years from time when it was invented care and to time when care was understood in society as necessary. And actually, I think that example uh, with care is important in understanding uh, of how digital technologies are accepted for society. Because if we compare the discussions, the arguments, the discourses, public discourses uh, of uh, about uh, and around the CARES inventions on the end of 19th and first half of 20th century, they are very similar to discussions, arguments, and discourses of uh, contemporary time about uh, invention and about acceptance of, uh, of digital technologies. And I think that um, metaphor, man with a red flag dilemma, is important uh, metaphor for uh, understanding and for using of digital technologies in contemporary society. And uh, we can uh, make an hypothesis that contemporary time is some time of changes. One, one social structures, one understandings, one skills are followed by another social structures, another understanding, another skills. It's time of changes. And actually, all times of changes were uh, followed by different conflicts. But actually, I think that uh, contemporary conflicts, misunderstandings, they could be a markers of changes. And they could be an investigations of these conflicts, investigations of differences between sides of conflict, between, uh, between, between uh, arguments, between understandings in different sides of conflict. It could be an important thing for analysis and for draw the vectors for future and for understand the vectors of changes. Actually, for contemporary time, most visible conflicts are connected with economy. We know about taxi drivers, uh, strikes and taxi drivers demonstrations against, against uh, Uber in different countries. Uh, we know about discussions about taxes policies from Airbnb and from another shared economies uh, actions. Uh, we know uh, probes or discussions about criminalization of some sharing works. And most important on this was uh, sheet about Google uh, Books. And this lawsuit was given by Google Books. And actually, the decision was, was on the side of Google Books, but not on the side of uh, authors and uh, institutions uh, and uh, these organizations. Uh, and you know the concept of sharing economy. It's some kind of ecosystem which is uh, based on the sharing of resources and where additional values are created by sharing of resources, but not by ownership. How it could work in the field of digital archaeology, I think, and I 
probe to IQ that uh, now we have and um, now we can analyze two different worlds in digital archaeology. Uh, for example, it is uh, uh, first 12 objects by keyword of archaeology in European. We found a lot of old books from the uh, east part of Russian Empire from the end of 19th century, followed by, followed by uh, metadata. If we talk about researchers, for example, people who research the history of archaeology, or who research, I don't know, some objects in archaeology, it could be very interesting information. But actually, the main scope of European is the general society. It's not scholar information system. Some similar we can find uh, in national information systems too. It's the Finnian heritage information system, Apparatus or heritage. And when we ask for keyword archaeology in Lithuanian, we found the photos of museum artifacts and the metadata about this. But if we ask for archaeology in Google, we found more higher level of different objects and different ideas. We found about archaeology, archaeology news, scholar archaeology, magazines, newspapers, societies, etc. In Facebook, about archaeology, magazines, archaeology news, museums, and different communities connected with archaeology. In YouTube, traditional mystics around archaeology. And discussions, a lot of discussions. Okay, true or not so true discussions, but it shows the interest to archaeology. How looks at a European record? It's object, it's photos of object, it's metadata. Actually, photos with some limitations. It depends on content provider, but in some situations you can find the photos with, I don't know, very big uh, watermarks and some similar things which, uh, which lim very limits reusing of these photos. Yes, it's metadata. Metadata is the strength of European, but actually it depends from content provider too, because in some, uh, around some objects the metadata are very poor or uh, in some cases they are incorrect. Limited filtering possibilities, limited networking with other objects possibilities, and sharing possibilities. If you compare with, for example, Facebook record about archaeology, I don't know did we can use the word record, but maybe yes. <coughs> it's unstructured data, it's object, yes, with some limitations, stories. The strength of social networks when we talk about archaeology, it's stories. It's uh, metadata in Europeana and stories in Facebook. Limited filtering, networking, development, sharing, discussions, crowdsourcing, and possibility to join the community. And if we compare the communities, that, uh, for example, Facebook community of Europeana, it's community world Europeana, they have about one 100,000 people who likes and about 100,000 people who follows. Only one archaeological magazine has 2 million likes and 2 million followers. It's huge differences. And I think that this huge difference shows differences between two worlds in archaeology. One could be named as curatorial, another as participatory. In curatorial, we have very big division between we and you, between experts, professional archaeologists, and audiences. In participatory, it's crowdsourcing oriented worldview. In curatorial, curators know everything. In participatory, we decide about our needs. In curatorial, curators as head manager, the curator is as moderator. Curators have intentions to preserve, and communities have intentions to use. In curatorial world, is very clear border between suppliers and customers. One side is suppliers, 
I'm on the side is customer. In participatory world, it's dependent on situation. In one situation, it could be supplier. In another situation, it could be it, it could be it could be customers. For example, uh, in project of virtual Palmyra, when uh, reconstructed the buildings, destroyed biases in Palmyra is used a uh, huge quantity of touristic photos made by members. By people who travel here, by absolutely no professional members. But actually, we know that for 3D reconstruction, we need a lot of photos from different angles. And these photos are used for digital reconstruction of destroyed objects. But actually, in this situation, who is supplier and who is customer? Hierarchical on direction communication from top to down, but, uh, but from the other side, the world is flat and we have network but it's for process sharing communication. From one side it's um, very homologous message, message, messages without possibility <coughs> to interpret because curators know everything. From the other side is possibilities to multi interpretations. Before our section we discussed about possibilities to moderate interpretations because actually we can, we can start the discussions and we can find a lot of absolutely crazy interpretations from our side as professional archaeologists. But actually, I don't know, some set of crazy interpretations shows some phenomena from society and shows how our knowledge works in society. From one side, from curatorial position, we can say that, okay, it's crazy, and we ignore it, but from another position, it exists, it's phenomenal. Okay, I doesn't agree with this, but I know that part of our society thinks similar, and we need to investigate understanding of our audience. Different limitations, small size in picture, in, in pixels, I don't know, watermarks, and etc., etc., etc. And following the open source, open access, public domain, CC0 principles. More state, public sector, official, more private uh, or personal initiatives. We can add one another thing that curatorial work is more expensive from the side of public money in comparison with participatory work because a lot of participatory practices, structures, and ideas. They are funded, I don't know, in some situations by crowdfunding model, and they are not so expensive for society. But actually, if you compare the similar things from costs and effectiveness position, then it's an important question too. So, and on this, you can talk or formulate like, some concept of sharing archaeology or sharing heritage. It's just archaeological, social, economic ecosystem. Why economic? Because I think that uh, it's created with added values. Not only added values financial of financial capital. You can talk about cultural, social capital, and then the intellectual and other forms of, of capital. <clears throat> but it's created with added values. It's input, yeah, okay, to our economics and. Uh, to the economic growth, to, to maybe social cohesion, and social cohesion is important for economic growth, etc. But it's social economic ecosystem built around the sharing of archaeological information. In broader sense, raw data, structured and structured experiences, interpretations, crazy ideas, and etc. includes sharing creation and co-creation and informational services. And what is important in this concept is important to uh, a lot of a huge part of archaeological information, digital information, is created on the public money. But actually, sharing of this information, society just pay for this. And from this, you can discuss the expected trends. Yes, sharing economies grow up sector. Yes, via sharing archaeology. Uh, by sharing archaeology, archaeologists contemporal, contemporalize it. Archaeology works not as not only as knowledge about society, about past societies, 
but it works as a source for inspiration, ideas, and some lot things of contemporary society. Curatorial oriented systems. I think that part of this will specialize it as uh, scholarly systems, as researcher systems, because they are very usual in, in, uh, when, when you make a research. And another part, it could be marginalized. And, and I think that it's one from, <coughs> from high level challenges for creators of this system because, for example, if you invest, in, I don't know, millions of euros to create a your system and to support of your system, and the system, after, I don't know, 10 or 20 years, is marginalized, it's a black hole in the terms of Leon Palmas, from Sibish Archival Office. And actually, sharing economy or sharing archaeology not exclude the curatorial position. It's not all sharing or curatorial. We need to find some blended solutions between curatorial and participatory worlds, but not blended solutions. For example, in some uh, informational systems, which we have now, I used connections with social networks. But I think that it's some lack of our understanding, because in some of our understanding, we understand for example, the Facebook as space for dissemination of information and to asking of people to join to real system because it's not some, somewhat real and somewhat not, not, not important. But I think that we need to think about really blended solutions where the two worlds and two infrastructures are connected and they support each another and they eliminate the, the, the weaknesses of each other and of each other and the strength the strengths of each other. But first we need to solve the man with red flag dilemma. Thank you.